everybody it's sam here thank you for watching so today i'm going to show you how i've made this little pop-up spring box thingy i called it something like that i made it six weeks ago during a facebook live and saw it on my side and realized i hadn't actually done a youtube tutorial so today's card's going to be a six by six size this is five by seven so i'll write the measurements for this size in the blog post and then i'll also link below this video the facebook live so you can see how the five by seven version has been made but today we're going to do the six by six and we're going to do a halloween version okay so for this six by six version you want a piece of six by i think it was 11 so i made sure that you don't need to use your large card stock yeah six by 11 so along the 11 inch side you want to score at half an inch one one and a half two and two and a half and then just flip the card and score that again. Then you wanna do a concertina fold. So each end you want to have a mountain fold that's next to your large six by six square. So that's a mountain, then a valley, mountain, valley, mountain. You basically wanna make sure that when you finish the folding, you have the open side facing inside the card and you've got the mountain or the folded side on the outside. You should have three mountains on the side there so i'm going to fold in that one first and then go back and then again so i've got the same on that side there okay so you want something like that it's kind of a diorama but then you're adding these extra pieces here and it's these pieces that you can then add more things too so if i show you inside this one here you can see i've got the bird suspended on a piece of acetate there which is attached to one of those folds in there on this side i've got the end of the twig there or the branch attached to the side i don't think there's anything from the bottom one you can see it there and it's again attached slightly on this side here so they're just really good supports and they make it spring and not dip in the middle if you add these. So you want two pieces of three by four, and along the three inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch, one, one and a half, two, and two and a half. And again, you wanna do a mountain, valley, mountain, valley, and finish with a mountain. So just like the sides of the card, you should have three folds that are all mountain folds like this. You'll then want a piece of six by six card. This is gonna be for the front. So it can be patterned, it can be plain. I'm still unsure if I'm gonna use this one on the front or keep this for inside and then have another piece, but you want a piece of six by six. And then if you're gonna decorate inside here, maybe you've got some nice pattern papers, then you'll want a piece of five and three quarter square to stick on the back. And you'll wanna do that now before we then start to add these pieces. So I've decided to go for this one on the back. So I've just trimmed it down to five and three quarters squared. That's going to be stuck on there, but I want to stamp some bats on it first. And then I've got this one for the front. So I've got my six by six black piece and then the white is five and three quarters squared. And this is the one that I want to cut the aperture into. So I'm going to use the inverted scallops. I think I'm going to go for this size here. I really want you to see a lot, but I want there to be enough room that these springy pieces can just go along the top and the bottom there but you're then going to be able to see, if I just pop this over here, you're going to see a nice amount of that background, which is, I've done it so that it matches my Dracula here, and I'll show you all that in a moment. So, like I said, I'm going to get that stuck there with some bats stamped on it. I'm going to get this one cut for now. Okay, so that's cut through both layers perfectly. You see, you get that really lovely detail. So rather it cutting that away, because it's the inverted design, you get to see it. And I think once it's against that, yeah, it's gonna really stand out. Yeah, that's gonna work nicely. So I've just gone and stamped the bats and I've also stamped the cobwebs and another spider and that's from the Spooky Fun set. And I think I'm going to stamp the fence there as well. Okay, so I'm taking one of those spring kind of support pieces here and I'm going to pop this one along the top. Now you may have yours further down, it depends on where 
your you know the size of your aperture so it will vary on your placement like you can see with this one here i've popped them quite far down okay closer to more kind of hug this the frame size there so it, it is completely up to you where you pop these pieces but just make sure that they are hidden I have that one there and then the same at the bottom and then you'll want to add glue onto those you might want to find you do the side first and then kind of work your way over so they all stick together but before I do that I've cut myself this edge here and it's using the trees from the EC edges that I've just released and I thought that would look quite good along the bottom so I trimmed it already to six inches, but I'm just trying to add as much kind of detail, depth, because he's going to be suspended. He's going to be kind of there, like he's just rising. I'm probably going to have a few tombstones maybe here as well. That would look quite good. So I just want to position that and get that stuck down. But what I'm going to do is not glue it right up to here so that I could tuck things in here if I need to. Okay, and there you have your springy box thingy <laughs> and it will stand even without these it stands i mean they are they do just give it that extra support but also you know another area for you to attach things so he's going to be i mean he could just pop up on some foam to be honest and that would give him if i give him quite a, a thick amount of foam that kind of matches the dimension of the card when it's flat then it's going to look like he's like rising up. So I'll probably do that. It's just a quick cheats way. But if you want to have this kind of effect here, then you can see you just want to attach some acetate, just thin strips to the back of whatever it is, and then you can stick them into wherever. So I've just popped three of the black squares, foam squares there. And I think I have him just about there. There we go. That all still will fold down. I think that looks really cool actually. Okay, so I need to start getting a bit more colour, some purple around here. So what I'm going to do is I've already, these are all orange ones, but I'm going to cut a couple of purple pumpkins. Um, but I've got some bits and pieces kind of lying around here. So just to give you an idea of like, you know, the tombstones, I'm probably going to do them in a different colour just so they you can see them more. But I've also got the fence here. I thought that would be quite nice to kind of, because I didn't add the glue, I could just tuck. I might even use that one actually. But there are, if you cut it just in plain black and just use the die, then you get the silhouette and it looks really nice as well. I've got this one here that's already in the purple color. So that will probably work quite nicely there. Um, and I've got another fence so I could use that you've got the haunted house oh there we go so it shows you how it would look as a silhouette the haunted house you know you could add stuff in the background if you wanted to but yeah with the pumpkins I just thought it'd be nice to have I've done them in pink on a witch's card which was really nice and you can see all these over on my Facebook page I've got them all loaded so you can see all the detail but if you back that with a bit of purple and maybe have it down there, that would look quite good. But I need to get my sentiment in and build up around that as well. So I'm going to pop it on high speed now and get all these pieces cut and just start placing them.
So I've added enough, but I still can add more. So I want to add a little bit of sparkle now. So I've just got this is the Spectrum Noir. It's the crystal, uh, crystal clear, sorry, um, sparkle pen. And I want to add it on to, I've added the, uh, the extra bat in there. I just thought it would look nice to have, have him uh, flying around there. So I'm just going to rub this over or brush it over. It will go on wet and kind of darker and then it will dry and it will just leave the sparkle. But I thought that would look quite good. Sparkly bat and we're going to have a sparkly coffin here as well. You can just squeeze those little push signs on the side there. Be careful because if it's new, when you squeeze it, a lot can come out and you don't want to be wasting it. But it's just a nice way to add a little bit more interest to the card. There we go. And I'm going to add some Nouveau drops as well. This is the crushed grape colour. And also, because people do usually ask, to get that blended background, I use the milled lavender, wilted violet, villainous potion and black soot uh, to create that effect and it's the same with the pumpkins there as well but this again completely optional but i do like to add nouveau drops i go through phases with them i start to like add lots and then i don't use them for a while and now i'm getting back into using them again i always like to do odd numbers uh, so we've got three, six, seven. Maybe I'll do I'll do two here. I'll do another smaller one, and then I'll do a large one there. They take a little bit longer to dry, so I just set that now. Leave it for the rest of the day or overnight, um, and they will self level, which they've already started to do. And there you have it. A really fun pop-up box springy thingy. I've made that many cards now, you start to run out of names for them. So it's literally just a box card, really. I've just added the extra, like I said, springy bits there. But uh, yeah, really fun one to do. Limited supplies, you know, you can cut your aperture, draw around something. So if you take out that, then no dies were used, you know, to make the actual box itself. Um, and then any theme you want. I've gone for the Halloween because it's my newest collection. And I just love it. And I think it's really fun to create with. So thank you, as always, for watching today's tutorial. I will link the product that I've used in the description box below. I'll link the product that I used in this card as well. But like I said, if you want to make this version 5x7 and you want to follow the, the live, it is longer. It's about two hours long, but that will be linked below. This one may eventually be edited down and go up onto the channel. But like I said, I will write the measurements for this size in the blog post when I do this one here. I'll just bring that up again so you can see the sparkle there from the pen and that lovely dimension there from the Nouveau drops. I would also just cut a piece of five and three quarters squared in white card to go on the back, stamp your sentiment in the middle, maybe write on it before you stick it and then attach that to the back. So that's where you've got your space then for your message. And, you know, they all stand up perfectly. And I'd also pop that into a box envelope as well. And I'll have those popping up now because um, of all the dimension on there. You could pop it in a bouncy envelope. I've got those as well. If you're maybe giving it by hand, a little gift bag's always nice as well. So lots of ideas there. Hopefully it um, keeps you inspired. And as always, I'll be back again soon. Take care. Bye.